What's up gearheads, it's Trev, and today at the garage, or just outside of it, we're installing a 50 inch light bar on the Jeep. This is another episode sponsored by Auxbeam. Go check them out. Auxbeam sent me this 50 inch light bar to test out across the windshield of the Jeep. We got the bar, they sent me the brackets, and this is their relatively new triple row LED. If it's anything like their headlights, it's going to be bright. Auxbeam does also make the brackets that you need to mount the 50 inch light bar. Uh, it's gonna utilize the Existing bolts, Torx, Y, Jeep, Y, uh, and mount just like every other Wrangler light bar mount that you've seen. Nice little bonus though, they send you some felt padding to stick on so that you don't have to worry about rattles and squeaks. That'll be nice and it's already got holes punched in it for the bolts. Not looking forward to taking those out. But, before I do, I have just a small problem. This has to come off. Now actually, one kind of saving grace thing about this is, if you guys remember, I had to reposition my snorkel because of a misunderstanding with Australian directions. I don't know what the hell a guard is in Australia, but apparently it's a multi-purpose word. Should carefully position the snorkel body onto the guard. Where is there a guard? Um, so this is actually spaced out a little bit, which is pulling on these. I don't know if you could see that quite in the camera, but this is being pulled out. And, you know, I had to re-drill for that as well. So, two good points. One, this is going to cover these oopsie holes. Two, it's going to take up the space that's pulling on this and level everything out. So the whole snorkel will actually be gapped out where it needs to be for this plate and that one. So that'll work out great. The only downside is I have to drill holes in my brand new bracket, but that's okay. One, two, three. So you know it's kind of funny. I remember in one of my old videos I was jacking up something on the gravel driveway in front of the rental garage that had the wooden floor and I was like, God, I would kill for pavement. You know what I have for a driveway, guys? Luckily, it's smaller stone, so when I drop something, like, oh, I'm looking in the wrong place. Oh, crap. I was just about to say, so when I drop something small in the gravel, it's easy to find. But now I can't find it! Um... Where did it go? Where did it go? I probably kicked it. Oh, my God! Does anybody see another one of these? Well, damn, if this isn't an open mouth and insert foot moment. There. There it is. Okay. So this is small, but I'm not lying. It still is at least a little bit easier to find stuff in this gravel driveway than it was at the rental garage. Maybe YouTube will make me enough money someday that I can pave this one. <laughs> that would be nice, actually. That'd be very nice. Let's get back to work. Look how wavy some of those holes are. That really was putting a lot of pressure on that. I should probably tap those flat again with a hammer so that the bracket fits properly. As with uh, most things that I do when it's a car project, it's always harder than it should be. I'm gonna go get dinner, I'll be back. 
We had dinner. It was delicious. I found Sammy. So now, I gotta flatten out that A pillar. First comes the painful process of crawling under the Jeep to loosen up the snorkel. So, sit on Sam's way. lap. Two studs in there somewhere. You know, I remember not having a whole lot of room to swing the ratchet in here either. I need a deep socket. Well, you're having a hard time getting up. Yeah. Is that a sign that you might be getting old? I wonder how much crap's gonna dump out of this hose that's been sucked in here. Probably a good idea to take it off once in a while just to clean it. Hey. Oh! There's no crud. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. That's saying a lot. Holy cow! Maybe I should clean the side of the Jeep right there. It's uh, been a while. You'll never know there was a snorkel there. <laughs> it's a really large gaping hole there. <laughs> the dirt. Okay, well, quick detailer to the rescue. We'll clean that up before we put it back together. So, here's the part I really don't want to do. Gently. Good enough. Okay. I need to get this front Torx out. And one, two, three. So, this is the Torx bolt that is the lock for folding the windshield down. But, these other three are all painted on. And are notorious for stripping. So I'm really not feeling too good about this. I gotta get a T40 in there. Get the breaker. We're gonna see if we can bust them loose. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna warm them up with the heat gun. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna dance. Sam's gonna dance and I'm gonna cry. Hey! Probably should have warmed it up anyway so it doesn't kill the paint, but... No, that worked pretty well. Okay. Yeah! All right. Jerry, if you ever need to buy another Wrangler, Pennsylvania rust and paint is apparently easier going on your Jeep than Canadian rust and paint. Because <laughs> that poor dude had to weld nuts onto these things to put an impact on him to get him up. Maybe it was an impact or a big wrench or something. He actually welded it and he ground the, these things flat, got the paint off them, put a nut on it, welded the nut to it through the center, and then put a socket on it and broke it loose. Wow. Some people need to get innovative to get these things out. Everything new, everything clean, paint. How many people? You think they're gonna comment like, just a little bit of quick detailer and a shop rag on all that dirt, you're scratching your paint. Well, considering what I do to this Jeep and that there's giant rust holes in the fenders, I don't think I'm worried. Take a pick. We're gonna punch out the holes with a pick that you can't see because the lighting's terrible because the sun's going down. Boom. I'm gonna try and do this without stabbing my finger. Now, I put this on. Um, I don't think they're gonna be long enough. Hmm. You sure they can go with both? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they can come with both. Yeah, they're not gonna be long enough. Well, isn't that interesting? That sucks. It does suck. <laughs> Yeah, they're not even close. Yeah, and actually, that's the other thing, too, is the way these bolts are shaped. These aren't countersunk anyway. So the way that tapered bolt is, it won't sit flush. Anyway. So I need more of these bolts. What's up, guys? So, bolt problem solved. We established that the factory Torx tapered bolts will not work to reach through the bracket to bolt in. However, 
the bolts that are for the lock will work to lock the uh, windshield frame up. So, to keep it looking slick and to know they'll fit, I ordered some factory Mopar windshield lock bolts. Now I'm going to be one short on each side because these only come two at a time since there's only two on the vehicle. And the warehouse I ordered from only had two packs of two. And there's one more on the way. So yes, I will eventually fill it all in, but if you feel like chirping me on the internet, like you're missing a bolt hole. So let's open this up and get this bracket put on. Almost looks factory. Sweet. Nice thing with these factory bolts too is they come with this little nylon washer on them. Keeps everything nice and protected. So although I was kind of bummed that Oxbeam didn't provide bolts for the brackets for their light bar, the light bar itself does come with brackets and hardware and tools so you can mount these on the side of the light bar these little pads go underneath here to isolate vibrations and noise and then you hook up to the light bar you could bolt down onto whatever setup you have some guys will just actually run like if you have a truck or something you run a plate right across the top of the roof or your mounting point and drill right in so looking at this now, unfortunately, when Oxbeam did this up, they painted the threads inside here where the hardware goes, as you can maybe see here. So I chased out this side just with the bolt. It would have been better with a die, or excuse me, with a tap. Do the other side, and then I just need to find some washers for inside and outside for the brackets. And now comes the fun part. Why do I get the heavy end with the wire? Because you're so strong. Sweet. It, it kind of works with your, your uh, It does. Front yeah, front. now it... Because that was actually... That was actually one thing that bugged me about this light bar. I, I didn't like the way this looked by itself with the circle headlights and the circle fog lights. But now... <laughs> with a light bar up there and a light bar down here and then the circles, that actually all kind of balances out pretty well. What do you think, Sam? Sweet. Sweet. So actually another good thing is the Oxbeam headlights are doing really well. At, there's no water getting into them. They're sealed well. So I'm assuming their light bar is going to be sealed just as well, unlike this light bar that I got from eBay that constantly has more and more water in it. So that looks awesome. Awesome. Now the next step is figuring out wiring. Initially I was thinking I could run it under this bracket, but this bracket sits, until it gets up to here, it sits pretty well right up against the windshield frame. It might actually be easier to flip the light over, run the wire down this side. The snorkel might even be able to hide some of it. If I could get it down and then into this section here, and the battery's on this side anyway, so that's where I have the relay for my other light mounted and everything, so it would make a lot more sense. So I think we're going to flip this over, then I need to get the snorkel on, so I need to drill, then we'll see what the next step is. Burning daylight, and when the daylight's gone, now I can bring it back. Light bar mounted flipped over wires on that side to hide the wiring as best as possible going to remove the cowl panel to do so I've got to take the wiper arms off and then there are one two and behind here three and four Phillips screws actually one two so there's four Phillips up here and then either two or four down here. I gotta pull the seal back and check. And then I can pop this cowl out and off of here. 
and have access to run the wire there. That seems like a really long explanation for a really simple thing. So that you know, wow. Now that you know about how to take that off, I'm just gonna pop it off and I'll get right back to you guys. Quick edit, there's another Phillips over there in the middle of the grill. So you could probably do this by yourself, but you better if you have a buddy, just lift up on each end with the hood up, angle it up, pull out. And it's actually way cleaner in here than I expected it to be. So now we can run this wire into here. I'll run it, I guess we'll run it down. See if I can just kind of loop it around the bottom of the hinge. I wish this wire was a little longer. Obviously I'm gonna have to extend the wires. And then we'll just run it down in here and connectors, heat shrink for a little bit of waterproofing, running them in here. Sam's got the cowl, we're gonna pop that back on. And we're gonna finish wiring everything up to, where'd the relay go? It didn't fall down your hole, did it? I don't know. A hole. I didn't think this through. Here it is. Fell. Uh, so yeah, we'll pop the cover back on. And that should tuck the wires in nicely, just like that. So here's the deal. I need to get the snorkel on. Then, all I need to do is finish the wiring for the light. I've got a couple issues that I might address later, but I just want to finish getting everything hooked up. So, stay tuned. I'll be right back. So I'm back. Pretty sure I got the lights done. Now it's just a matter of finishing the snorkel, getting that on, but I wanted to give a little update. This looks like a wiring mess. It's not as bad as it looks. I really want to reroute this section because this is getting pinched. I'm trying to protect it. This is gonna cut through eventually. It's bending the seal. I gotta figure out something better here. But, we're hooked up here, we're hooked up here, we got our relays, this is for the light bar we just installed, this is the, for the little light bar that I had before. All my wires are following the factory loom, so that at some point I can run loom over it and make everything look all nice and tidy. If I get real brave, I might even put relays in the relay box because there's spaces. Now as for the switch, I tied into the same switch for the little light bar. I ran the signal wire, which comes from the headlights, to the same switch here. So, that basically means that as soon as I flick that switch, the top light bar and the front light bar should come on at the same time. The headlights have to be on. Right now, that's ambient lighting. I turn the headlights on and then flick the switch. Let's see what happens. Woo wee! Wow! That's bright. How's my face lit up? Wow. This is gonna be pretty uh, interesting to see at night. Sweet. So I'm gonna put my interior back together. Then I'm good to go on the lighting and the only thing I need to finish up is getting the snorkel back on. So I'll catch you in a few. Snorkel's hooked up. It's loose at the bottom. Here comes the scary part. Mark the holes to drill. Brand new bracket. So I'm gonna take these as close to the edge as I can. So I'm gonna bring this right here. It doesn't quite sit flush or right like I had hoped it would. Actually, you can see that's pretty bad. But you know what? I'm just gonna roll it. Drill my pilot holes. Probably should take the snorkel off, but I'm getting lazy and impatient, so, oh well. Oh, 
Oh, I know my drill bits are worn out, but I gotta give it to Oxbeam. It's a pretty thick bracket. Okay, guys. This is in. And I think I drilled a third set of holes in my A pillar because the position changed slightly again. So this poor A pillar, I'll be really shocked if it doesn't rust out in the next couple of years. We'll see, but snorkel is now mounted. Um, all I need to do is tighten up the bolts down on the bottom here. And then this project will be done. It's taken a lot longer than it should have. Okay guys, I know you can't see me, but I'm done. Finished in the dark. Or is it dark? Can you see me now? It's like daylight again. Oh God. We'll wrap this up in the morning. Say goodnight, Sammy. Peace. <laughs> so the Oxbeam 50 inch triple row LED light bar is finally on. It's a little more difficult than what it should have been, but that's just me and my vehicles. You guys know how it goes if you're a subscriber. I want to thank Oxbeam again for sponsoring this episode. I will have links in the description to where you can get this light bar and bracket. If you guys have any questions or comments on anything, post them below. Otherwise, as usual, talk to you guys later. We got the windows down, we got